Hello, my name's Arthur, and today I'm going to talk about how I'm coming up on one year of living as a gay man. First, I'm going to talk about why I didn't always know I was gay and why the path toward me finding out my sexuality was pretty confusing and hard for me. Then I'm going to talk about how this past year has gone, how dating and hooking up and being part of community as a gay man has been for me, and then I'm going to talk about some goals I have going forward for year two of living as a gay man. So for those of you who are new to my channel, I'm a trans man, and so that has certainly influenced my path towards realizing my sexuality. One of the big reasons that I've only been living as a gay man for the past year has been I've only been living as a man for a few years now, but that's not the only reason. When I was living pre-transition, I identified quite strongly as bisexual. When I was 14, maybe 13? Freshman year in high school, however old that makes you, um, I had this very strong and very persistent crush on my best friend's older sister. I wrote a dramatic love poem about her. I held this crush very secretively because one, it was like my first queer crush, and two, because well, she was my best friend's older sister. And so that was like, you know, a serious part of me realizing that I was queer was my attraction to women at that point in time in my life. When I was coming up on my transition, I was in a relationship with a man, and he was also bisexual, and so that felt like a core part of our relationship, is that, you know, we were two queer individuals. What was really striking to me was that we had always identified our relationship as queer, even when he was a man and I was living as a woman. But when I cut my hair and started passing as male, we re I mean, I certainly realized, and I think he did as well, that there is a very different type of queer relationship when you get read by society as queer. And so it was crazy because we went from, you know, just walking down the street holding hands with no comments to people, like, heckling us to random older women being like, that's true love, to feeling unsafe at night. One of my first memories of passing as male was I came back to... to my college campus, and I was walking down the street alone, looking like an effeminate twinkish boy, and this guy was following me on a moped on the sidewalk, yelling like the F slur at me. And I knew that he was reading me as a gay man that was too effeminate for his liking. My earliest memories of being read as a man were being read as a gay man, that didn't look quite right, and the harassment that came with that. And so I think it's pretty hard to remove those experiences from my journey of realizing my sexuality. I remember I was, again, just walking down my college campus, and this car slowed down beside me, and the guy, like, in the, in the, in the passenger seat lifted up a gun at me and shook it at me, again, trying to harass me because I looked so visibly gay. When my relationship with my ex was failing, one of the things I was really aware of, which I've talked about in other videos, is that our sex life wasn't working, and that I, I didn't think I was sexually attracted to him. We broke up, and I had started testosterone at that point, and was really starting to live as a man. I was in a new city, starting my PhD program, and in COVID isolation. So this was 2020. In COVID isolation, I only saw my housemates, and I only saw people in my PhD program. None of these people I was trying to form a relationship with, because these were my classmates, they felt like siblings almost, because I spent all my time with these individuals. It was so tempting to think that I wasn't gay, and to think that I might not be attracted to men, because I'd gotten this message that being a man who's attracted to men is really bad, and then I knew that my relationship with my ex, I knew that I hadn't been attracted to him, and I had very few people I was interacting with, so I was just sort of making guesses as to my sexuality. There was no sort of practical application of my sexuality, so I could sort of just imagine, what if I was a straight man? What would that be like? And I didn't actually have to do anything about it. I was not going on dates, I was not hooking up with people, I was not having sex. So what was surprising to me was that post-transition, I had an experience having sex with a woman. I was just so surprised at how that went for me. It was fine, and it was fun, and I felt so manly, and I felt so, like, it was definitely, it felt like straight sex to me. But I was surprised that coming away from it, I didn't feel like I had been sexually attracted to her. And even though it felt more fun, and it felt more lighthearted, it, it still felt like things had felt with my ex, where it, it felt like not the kind of sex I was hoping for. And so I came out of that, like, am I really into women? The thing that felt really wrong about having sex with her was that she was a woman, and, and that was the thing I couldn't get out of my head. I thought that, in many senses, I thought she was attractive, I thought she was really charming, she was like a great friend, a lovely person, but I was like, she's a woman. The way I experience sexual attraction is different from the average person, perhaps. I need some amount of interaction and engagement with people. Like, I'm attracted to a dynamic with a person, I'm attracted to like, eye contact, to like bits of touch, to banter, to like flirtation. I'm attracted to like the way someone smiles and the way that they carry themselves in a room. I'm not attracted to like bodies. I'm not attracted to like mustaches or beard or biceps or butts. Like that's not how it works for me. And so if I was sitting alone in my room looking at photos of men and photos of women, it's... I 
it doesn't do anything for me. It's all about like that actual engagement. And so I think I had not been sure about whether what my sexuality was because I hadn't been able to actually engage with men and engage with women because I was I was living in COVID isolation. And the second I had that experience of post-transition really being me, being a man, and I had sex with a woman, I realized that wasn't what I wanted. So then later, about one year ago, I had sex with another gay trans man. And I think that was the final piece to the puzzle for me of learning my sexual identity and realizing that I was gay. It was so clear that he carried himself as a man and he carried himself with a masculine energy and that was what I was attracted to. And I remember having sex with him and being like, wow, we are having sex as two gay men and this is correct. This is what it's meant to be for me. Yeah, and so around one year ago I had that experience and I had with sort of clarity where I was interacting with people, flirting with people at parties, and I realized that I was gay. And so how has this past year of living as a gay trans man been? Well, I I'm reminded of this video that I watched on YouTube that must be pseudoscience, which was talking about how we conceive of the passage of time. And the thesis of this video was that when you are making lots of memories and having lots of really cool and exciting and novel experiences, time feels like it's going by really quick in the moment because you're enjoying yourself. But then when you look back, it feels like that time takes up a lot of space in your brain. As you're living in the moment, time like flows by so quickly. But when you reflect back, it feels like that time went on for way longer than it did. And that's kind of how I feel about this time that I've had living as a gay trans man. I've had so, so, so many experiences in this past year. I felt more alive in this past year and more connected to myself and my identity and who I am than all of the years previously. And so if I think about my dating experiences, my experiences hooking up with people. So many of these memories come from just this one year. And so it feels like I've always been a gay trans man. And yet also this year has just flown by. I remember one year ago, I was filming this video about my ambiguous sexuality where I was still trying to come to terms with like the fact that I thought I was gay and how confused I was about what dating and sex would look like for me going forward. I have had, as I said, a lot of experiences with dating and hooking up with people in this past year. I've had two pretty serious relationships. So one was with someone who I dated starting in August and then through February. Now I've been dating my current partner for like three to four months and I'm super excited about that relationship but that's that's a whole other video. Throughout those relationships and in between those relationships I've been hooking up with people as well. I have made out with people at parties, made out with people at clubs, I have hooked up with people off Grindr, off Tinder, I've hooked up with people I've met in real life and all of that's been pretty wild for me and very different for me. There's a lot to say here but I guess I just want to go into some of my reflections um, of this past year. The first reflection I've had is that the experiences of people who are gay men who fall under the umbrella of gay men is, are just so varied. And I think that when I was living in COVID isolation and when I didn't have a sense of a queer community, which was honestly when I started filming this, these videos and this channel, in my first video you'll see, hear me talk about how like, I don't know any trans people in real life and I also didn't know many queer people and I certainly didn't have like a queer community like I do these days. I had this sense that like a gay man looked like a particular thing. And now I know there are just so many different experiences. So there are gay men who are like, very sexually promiscuous. And there are gay men who are like, I only want a monogamous relationship, sex is super important to me, I will only do that with someone who, where it's very special. There are really masculine gay men who like absolutely love sports, and then there are gay men who are so effeminate that you would know they're gay like from 40 feet away. There are trans gay men, there are cis gay men, there are people who fall under the umbrella of gay men who like don't identify as men um, and who might identify as non-binary or genderqueer but be like comfortable being lumped in with other gay people. There are gay people who really emphasize that they are attracted to non-binary people and attracted to androgyny and then there are gay men who will have hooked up with women and who will maybe feel like eh, it was okay, it was fine, just not for me. There will also be gay men who will have known since they were 12 that they would never want to kiss a woman ever. I came into my experience feeling very insecure about a variety of aspects of my gayness. I was really insecure about feeling sexually inexperienced. A lot of the loudest gay men I know, or people, again, under the gay male umbrella, will be people who have lots of hookups and who are really comfortable in places like Grindr and clubs. And that wasn't me. I remember at first being like, yeah, like, I don't know what having sex is going to look like for me. I feel pretty insecure about, you know, like, my lower half and I have some bottom dysphoria and all of that. And so that was like on the top of my mind was feeling sexually inexperienced. But for both of the people that I've dated since being out as gay, I have been the most serious relationship that either of them have had, both my, my ex and then my current partner. And so even though while I was thinking a lot about how I felt sexually inexperienced, 
I think that both of them have had thoughts about feeling romantically inexperienced. I had felt sort of special and unique in all my body insecurities that come from the fact that I'm trans, but I realized that many other people under the gay male umbrella have all sorts of body insecurities, and that having sex and being naked with someone is a really vulnerable and intimate experience, whether you're cis or whether you're trans. Realizing that you can have this particular image of like a gay man who's like this twinkish, jockish type who's white and blonde and beautiful and has sex with all sorts of people and is really confident and out there. That's like one image of a gay man, but there are so many people who are gay in some shape and form. And now that I've really been part of the community, I, I just don't put the same pressure on myself as I used to. It's like, I'm one type of gay man. There are many types of gay men. And I've also felt that dating and hooking up with people has been profoundly different, just being post-transition and feeling authentically me. Everything feels a lot higher stakes, and that's exciting, also a little scary. I previously had felt like dating was like a sort of game. Like I wanted to win a boyfriend. I wanted to win affection. I wanted to prove to myself that I was pretty enough and I was feminine enough and I was worthy. And now, I date because I want to have connections with people, because I'm me and I want myself as me and my partner as my partner to interact and to be able to to bond. And that's just scarier to like be authentically you and hope that that person likes it. I had come to peace with being single last summer and I was really content with being single and exploring who I was. And so now that I've been dating after having reached this place of being like, it's also fine to be single, I'm dating with a kind of different set of purposes. I'm dating with just really just searching, yeah, for authentic connection and for companionship and support and, and adventure. I'm not dating just for validation. It's, it feels healthier that way, it feels better that way, but it's also, it's intense. With that has come the fact that sex feels really different post-transition. It now feels to me about intimacy and connection, and previously I would find myself often dissociating during sex. I would imagine that I was existing sort of like in a porn video, and that I was just playing a part. And now I feel really like me. and. That's pretty wild. Like, sex feels so different than it used to. Okay, my battery died, but I'm back. So now I'm gonna talk a bit about sex, and so I'm just gonna flag and put in the corner um, a video that I made a bit ago about why I talk about sex in the first place. But as I said, it was something that I was really concerned about as I started to transition and as I realized I was gay, I didn't know what sex was going to look like for me. It's been important that I've kept an open mind, and I hope to continue to keep an open mind going forward, about what ways I enjoy having sex. And so when I started out one year ago, I think I envisioned myself as a top and I envisioned myself as masculine. And one year later, I mostly, almost exclusively bottom, and you can see based on the shirt I'm wearing, I, I don't really consider myself that masculine. And so things have ebbed and flowed. There was a point in time where I was mostly into oral. There was a point in time where I was really quite comfortable with PIV. Now, I'm not that comfortable with PIV, not that comfortable receiving oral, and I'm almost exclusively bottom anally. And when I do, I wear like a jock strap, so everything else is like covered. Yeah, I think I would have never called that that would be what sex would look like for me. If I go back and I end up enjoying PIV again, doesn't mean I'm less of a man, and maybe that will come as I go through waves of feeling more and less comfortable in my body. And similarly, I've had a complicated relationship with topping. I put a lot of pressure on myself. I don't feel it in a putting pressure because I'm trans sense. I've known many trans men who are like really great tops. I put in a lot of pressure on myself of like, me, as Arthur, personally, I feel insecure about my ability to top. Not because I'm trans, not because of anything, just because I feel inse insecure and inexperienced. Everything has been in flux, and I think that when I put a lot of pressure on things to look a certain way, or pressure on myself to like certain things, that's been hard. But if I just sort of meet everything with, with curiosity, that's been good. And another thought I've had is that if I'm going to hook up with someone, they need to have thought about trans men before, and conceived of trans men as men without me holding their hand. So what I mean here is like, so, I'll tell you an example of a guy that I met at a party. We were just talking, and I think really hooking up was never on the table. I was just meeting him, like, as a friend. And we met, and I was trying to get practice coming out as trans more. I've been trying to be more open about being trans. So, at some point, I tell him that I'm trans, and he's like, whoa! And you could tell that the, the cogs were turning in his brain. He's like, I met you, and I just thought of you as Arthur. Like, I am, like, totally surprised, and that's, like, so cool. And then we talked a lot about, like, how I came out, what it was like realizing I was trans, how I relate as a man. You could tell in this conversation by the end of it, he was like, man, Arthur is transgender, Arthur is a man, Arthur is a gay man, and then at some point he was like, I think he called me hot or something, and it was again like, unclear if that was flirting or if he was just like, being like, yeah, you're so hot, you did your transition, like, I, I don't know. But either way, I think at the start of that conversation, 
he had not really thought of trans men. By the end of the conversation, he had thought of trans men, realized I was a man, and realized I was still a gay man and still attractive, and I was also trans. Uh, he was a lovely person, and I think that just takes people a little bit of time. Even if you're lovely, even if you're liberal, even if you're amazing, if you have never thought of trans people before and never realized that a trans person can be attractive and, and normal, you just gotta recalibrate a little. If I am gonna hook up with someone, I want them to have already done that processing. So I had this one hookup where I didn't even say that I was trans at any point. Um, it was in my Grindr profile, so he knew, but he didn't comment on the fact I was trans, and I didn't comment on the fact I was trans. We were just aware going in, and it was never addressed, and I felt really comfortable around him. Then at one point, he was like, oh, like, before we go off and hook up, I'm gonna say goodbye to my friends. He says goodbye to his friends, and I recognize someone that I know is, like, a stealth trans man. I realized that the reason I felt so comfortable around him, and the reason he like, didn't make it weird at all that I was trans, was because he'd already conceived of trans men before. He met this trans guy, and I assume because they seemed quite close to the guy at some point had told him he was trans, but maybe he didn't. So he, he knew a trans man, he knew trans men are men, and as such, despite being a cis gay man, treated me super, super normal. Then on the other hand, I have gone to some gay clubs. At gay clubs, you just kind of make out with people, dance for a bit, and move on. And I'd known each of the times when I would make out with people, dance for a bit, and move on, that these people did not know I was trans. I would know for a variety of reasons, in part because the norms around consent at gay clubs are super different from straight spaces, so people will just grab your crotch. I pack, so I learned that my packer passes because Men were groping it, <laughs> and then they would be like, wow, it's so big. It isn't. It's two and a half inches, so I gather that they're just saying that to everyone. So I was at these, you know, gay clubs with people that have probably never thought of trans men who do not know that I'm trans, and I was always, like, very afraid, like, what if somehow someone realizes I am trans on the dance floor and acts weird about it? And that did happen once, where someone, like, really quickly reached under my shirt before I could stop him and felt that I had tape around my chest because I'm pre-op, and put the pieces together that I was trans and was like really disgusted and walked away. And coming out of that, I was like, I mean, that was a very bad experience. <laughs> that was not fun. And as I processed that, my takeaway was that like, society teaches you that being trans is gross. Um, it taught me that. I have not all, like I had to process the fact that like, trans men are not gross in transitioning and I'm a trans person. Everyone has to process that. And if that person had never conceived a trans man before, and the only point he did was when he realized that the guy that he was making out with was trans, yeah, his first past reaction was disgust because that's what society teaches us is okay. And so like my first ex didn't really know any trans people before me. I told him I was trans over messenger. He took some time to respond, called some friends, thought about it, and was like, I know Arthur, Arthur's a man, and this is different, but it's fine. The current person I'm dating is genderqueer and has lots of friends who are trans, and so similarly, he'd already kind of done that work. And I realized like that's what it's gonna take if you wanna date me, if you wanna hook up with me, is that that person has to have already done that reflection on their own. And that won't be everyone, and that's okay. And again, obviously plenty of people like are not gonna wanna hook up with trans people, but there's a way that you reject people when you're not sexually compatible that is different than disgust. If two bottoms are making out, and they realize that they both are exclusive bottoms, and that's what they're in for the night, they reject each other without being like, oh, gross. And that's the kind of like thing I aim for, right? If someone doesn't want to hook up with me because I'm a trans guy, and they're like, oh, like, not my thing, and moves on, not like you. Another reflection is that there have been times where I've been insecure about being about my masculinity, not because I'm trans, but because I'm gay. And that was surprising to me. Like, I've been in spaces and felt like, oh my god, I'm so gay. And not felt like, oh my god, I'm so trans, but like, really, like, oh my god, I'm so gay. I went to this party that was like a frat-themed party. Weird. And I didn't know all the, like, little handshakes that straight guys do where they, like, pat each other on the back, and then, like, there are so many rules to beer pong. I thought I knew beer pong. I don't. And in the space, I remember feeling like, wow, like, it's really obvious that I'm gay and this is not a gay space. Fun to have different ways to be insecure about one's masculinity. Yeah, and then the, the biggest thing I felt is the joy of gay friendships and the joy of gay community. And so my community is not just gay men, but it's like, say, the broader queer community. Over the past, like, handful of months is really feeling like I have people and people have my back and that there are so many different queer experiences and that queer friendship is really awesome. That's that. 
I have had a fantastic year. What are my hopes and goals going forward into year two? I think the first goal is to really embrace being trans, in particular around disclosure. So something that isn't an exact analogy, but that I think of a decent amount is that my partner, who is genderqueer um, and somewhat effeminate, he exclusively tops. And so he'll often have to like disclose that if he's going to hook up with someone, because they wouldn't guess that necessarily based on his appearance. And he just kind of like owns it. Like, yeah, like you might not guess this about me, but this is true. And I would love to have that attitude around being trans. And it's obviously super different, but I would love to just be like, yeah, you might not guess that I have the body I have, but guess what? I'm trans. That's that. Not as something that I'm embarrassed about, not as something that I feel ashamed about or like it's some deep dark secret, just like something that would surprise you. <laughs> Another thing that I thought about is that I want to have more gay trans male friends. I have really loved the connection I've made this year with gay trans men. I think it's so cool, this like really unique shared experience of like having to come to terms with one gender and one sexuality that gay trans men have, and this unique set of shared experiences around disclosure, rejection, and you know, the joy of, of really feeling like yourself. And so I've met a solid handful of gay trans men, more than most people will in their, in their entire lives, but I want more. Um, I want parties just full of gay trans men, I want a community, I want a network. I also want to top more. I have gotten in really my head and been insecure about that, but I want to get over that. I want to do it because it's fun, not because it makes me a man, but just because it's something I want to do. <laughs> and yeah, like, doing new things or things that you're inexperienced at is hard and scary, but like, that's part of life. And the last goal I've had for this upcoming year is wanting to embrace hotness. So what I mean by that, it's, it's all centered around this revelation I've had dating my current partner. I think of my current partner and one of my exes as looking like a similar kind of person. So they both get red as men when they go out, but are somewhat effeminate. They're both like 5'8", not wildly in shape, but kind of slim, have stubble, have nice jaw lines, will, you know, sometimes wear makeup or clothing meant for women, that kind of thing, and are moderately conventionally attractive, um, but kind of in a gay way. I am entirely into vibe and entirely into personality, so I can look at these things, like, because I'm capable, like, I exist in society, so I can, like, make these weird evaluations. But my attraction to them is, like, entirely off of confidence, how they carry themselves, the ways we interact. My ex considered himself ugly, my partner considers himself hot, and those things have just wildly impacted their lives in so many dimensions. Not just the kinds of people they hook up with, the kinds of people they date, but, like, the ways they have every type of interaction. I've just realized that I, too, have a choice. Like. I think of myself as, yeah, also moderately conventionally attractive in a somewhat gay way. I can choose to view myself hot, or I can choose to view myself as ugly, and that's an option. And I want to choose hot. I want to embrace being confident and embrace, embrace being young and embrace being excited about the fact that I'm gay. And it's hard and scary to be confident and to own yourself and to view yourself as hot. But that's a goal I have going forward. It's been a great year. I hope to have a great year next year. If you have any questions from what I've said, ask them, and I will get back to you in the next video.